Hello and welcome. Thank you for popping into my channel. If you are new here, please like and subscribe for me. If you find this content helpful, then smash that notification bell so that you don't miss out on the next video. Comment below with anything that you need help with or topics you'd like me to cover. And check out my website, consultingninja.tech. With that out of the way, let's get to it. I have a few more tips and tricks that I want to give you guys dealing with authentication. One thing I want to point out is that in a previous video, I will link to that in the description, but I showed how to use JWT tokens to authenticate a user and more specifically, how to do that authentication check inside of your handle function in the hooks.server.ts file. One thing that I want to show you guys here is that we do have to be really careful when we're using this setup when you're accessing child pages. And in order to give an example of what I'm talking about, let's go ahead and add a console.log into our handle function. And let's just say requested URL is. And then we'll spit out the event.url.pathname and give that a save. And now if we navigate to home, we'll see that the requested URL is slash. If we navigate to the, your page, we'll see that the requested URL is slash and then the user's URL. And if we navigate to dashboard, then we'll see that the requested URL is the username slash dashboard. And then this is a, an, an auth check. I'll show you guys that in just a minute. But what I want to point out, let's go back to our source code and inside of that directory, let's create a child page. So create a new folder and call this nested page. And then a new file plus page.svelte. And let's just make an h1 that says I am no longer checking off at this page. Uh oh. Give that a save. And now in our dashboard plus page.svelte, right up in the top, let's just make a link to that page here. A href equals, and then we'll just have to do some fancy bracket stuff here. This will be data.user minus password dot URL slash dashboard slash nested page and we'll just call this nested and give that a save now in our dashboard we have access to this nested page and if I click that link we see that page I am no longer checking off at this page uh oh and if I go to my terminal you will see that there is no request for that URL being spit out here and that is because there is no request going to the server for that page. So if you are implementing nested pages inside of your application and they come after an authentication check, you will need to recheck. For myself, what I did was I created a check auth API. Inside of my routes, I created a slash API folder and in there a check auth route. And that route is a post request that takes the request and looks for the cookie pulling out the authentication token and making that check and returning the user if the authentication in fact checks out. One other thing I want to point out here with this is that the original authentication check that I showed in the previous video I used the locals but you also if you wanted to could use this API uh, to do that same authentication check. And in fact, that's actually what I've implemented here. In this version of the plus page.server, I'm actually not using the locals that I showed in another video. I'm using that API endpoint. When the load function triggers, I hit that endpoint and check authentication at that point. If the authentication check fails, we just redirect same as we would if we were using the uh, locals.auth user. And then inside of your actions, uh, there's the ability to uh, save options inside of that dashboard. You also do the same check there, run that same check, 
uh, just as you would if you were using locals. So if you're using the locals version inside of your actions, you would just implement locals. I will make this source code available so you'll have both versions available in the repository. Uh, the locals version of the plus page dot server will be in the lib folder, so be sure to check that out. And then the authentication API version uh, will be in the plus page dot server TS inside of dashboard. So be sure to check out both versions. Something that I want to point out here is that when I'm making my authentication check, you'll see that I'm passing fetch in. And that is because these, the load function and the action, these are both running on the server side. And so we want to give SvelteKit access to its own fetch just like it would normally want. And so inside of my auth check function, this is what calls that API. That way I can save myself some typing and just use this wherever I need it. But what I'm doing is I'm passing the SvelteKit fetch into here, and then that's the fetch that I'm using to make the actual call to my API endpoint. So if you're going to implement this, be sure to do that for yourself as well. Pass the fetch in from SvelteKit to your function, and then you can run this function wherever you want just as I have done here. We just run that function passing in fetch, and then we have our authentication response with the status, the result, and again, that user minus the password. And then you can make use of that wherever you need to in your application. I hope that this video has been helpful for you. If you liked it, please give a thumbs up and subscribe if you have not already. Comment below with your thoughts and pass this video around. It would really help my channel. Take care, and as always, have a great day. Mm -hmm.